All right, he's on the uh, Newsmaker line as we speak. North Dakota native, the pride of Wishick, University of North Dakota grad, and the newest advisor to Herman Cain and his presidential campaign, Mark Fifley. Mr. Fifley, how are you? Hey, Scott. Good to join you. I'm doing well. What's your favorite uh, Wishick story? It must involve the Sauerkraut Festival or something, right? Oh, wow, yeah, the Sauerkraut Festival. Every year, I think they just had it. I think we must have missed it. I did uh, miss it again this year, and I've told myself one time, I want to go back to when there's a Mark Fifley parade, and you're like the Grand Marshal, and I can just, you know, drive the car or something, okay? (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Yeah. Looking forward to that. And by the way, I talked to Jim Bowman earlier, legendary broadcaster on KNOX Radio and uh, Grand Forks, our affiliate there. And I said, later on the program, I'll be chatting with Mark Fifley, a UND grad, and he remembered well your uh, service during the flood of uh, 1997. Remember when? Those were the years, yeah. That was an amazing time. And we were, exactly. we were broadcasting live from the uh, UND Aviation School in all 24-7. It was an amazing time. I, I remember very well when you called the cell phone. I think I had a cell phone that was about the size of a football at the time. Remember those? And, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, I was literally down to my last nerve. I mean, I'm out of gas. I'm just worn out. I'm literally talking into a microphone. We had a microphone and nothing else. I mean... No telephone lines, no music, no uh, let's go to news, nothing in a garage at Public Works at the at the University of North Dakota, and uh, you know, uh, shut down for the night. My phone rings. It's you, Mark Fifley, who I'd met uh, at a class at the UND when you asked me to speak as a as a fellow conservative to uh, a rather liberal member of the uh, uh, you know the faculty at the University of North Dakota, even though he's a good guy who's still there, by the way, Mr. Schaefer, is he not? Yeah, great guy. Dr. Richard yeah. Schaefer, wonderful Dr. Professor. Richard Schaefer. I remember speaking at that class, so that's how Mark and I met. And uh, so he calls, you know, whatever that was a year or so later, and says, um, hey, can I help? And I'm like, can you help? Take over right now. And uh, shortly thereafter, they, you know. Mark and Scott, has... you put me on the, on the primo shift, midnight to 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And that, that was long before Red Bull. I think that was your suggestion, by the way, long before Red Bull was right, yeah. I, and you did a, you, you belonged in the morning show, doing fabulous. Anyway, those were the days, as we say. Mark leaves University of North Dakota, goes on to work for FEMA, and ultimately the Republican National Committee, and a number of cabinet secretaries, and ultimately serves a great man, the 43rd President of the United States, as a top advisor, George W. Bush, in the Pentagon. Very much a part of uh, the communications effort, global communications effort, on the surge and the war in Iraq and national security and just this storied resume, and that has led now to um, Senior Advisor for the Herman Cain for President campaign, so congratulations on your new role. Thank you very much, Scott. I appreciate it. it it's, a, it's a real honor to join. We see that uh, Mr. Cain is he's a, a different politician. In fact, he's not, he's not a politician. He's an entrepreneur. He's a, he's a real guy, and we are seeing just tremendous momentum uh, progressing and seeing his supporters and getting to meet the people that, that, that are working for him and that are supporting him, it's been a great honor. When you say he's an entrepreneur, not a politician, um, some would put Mitt Romney in, the, in, the, in that camp because he spent more time, obviously, outside of government than in government. It, by the way, do you believe that's the choice right now between those two? I think the field is still open. There's a lot of people that are running right now. I think that, that Mr. Cain has the momentum. Uh, right now as as he's moving on past the debates into the next debates as we have two more months before the first caucuses and primaries. He is seeing right now he is leading the debate as far as the economic security and the tax debate with his 999 plan. He's coming together with that and substantive policies on a number of different things. And he's a a no-nonsense business guy. He's turned around struggling companies. He's help them to rediscover success, and he truly believes, and I think he will, do the same for America. He's an experienced chief executive officer. He has real solid, tough negotiation skills, and he will make our country respected once more. But, you know, as much as I admire entrepreneurs, politics is such a crazy business in that to, to have done it before, you benefit from it. And, you know, I think the last week would be a prime example of what can happen when you, when you sort of are not a political animal, which I credit him for. I'm not, I'm not suggesting. I think one of the reasons that Herman Cain is rocking to the top of the polls is because he's never been elected to anything before. God bless him. And I think that's what people want. But I would ask you this. Uh, can a candidate literally for the top job 
in the free world, President of the United States actually, you know, aspire to that position and the Republican nomination without any previous political experience? Well, I think he can. He does have some experience, uh, Mr. Kane does, with the Federal Reserve. So he has some government experience. But it's really, it, look at what the Washington politicians have done for us so far. We have a 14, nearly $15 trillion national debt. Our deficit for this year is $1.3 trillion alone. Our unemployment rate, over 9%. 14 million people are looking for jobs right now. 18% of America is underemployed. So if, if we're looking for the same old, same old, and if people out there are looking for, let's go back again to the well, they're probably not going to go to, 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 to Mr. Kane. But if they are looking for a fresh, refreshing leader, somebody who is no nonsense, somebody who's going to tell it like it is, something that somebody who is going to go to Washington and shake things up, I think Herman Cain is the right choice. By the way, uh, we're going to need to take a break here in a moment, but there's a number of things that I want to ask you about, including uh, the, the contrast of, of, of Herman Cain and the other candidates, as well as the week that was, which has been a difficult one, without question, I think fairly uh, and objectively uh, for Herman Cain, starting with the, the comments on the abortion issue and the, the smoking ad continues to be an obsession in the media, so I want to get your take on a, on a few of those things, and, and withering criticism from the left and the right, Republican establishment and the left. Is you know is that tough for a... For a, you know, a in the case of Herman Cain, obviously, the guy's got an incredible, you know, world experience, but doesn't necessarily have a lot of political experience. I mean, how's he handling the, the, the withering spotlight right now? Uh, he has seen over the last couple of weeks go from a pen light shown on him to a floodlight. So that new attention and that new um, prominence means that they, both sides, the left and the right, in the establishment in Washington, are unloading the kitchen sink on. But he is doing great on the campaign trail. All right, short break. More on this uh, with Mark Feifley, new senior advisor for Herman Cain and the Cain campaign. The Cain train is a rolling. More after this. Don't go away. It's the Common Sense Club and the Scott Hennett Show. Continuing our conversation with North Dakota native UND grad, our pal Mark Feifley, the senior advisor for the Herman Cain for President campaign right now. And uh, your analogy is stuck with me through the break on uh, uh, how Herman Cain has gone and the whole campaign really has gone from a pen light to a floodlight. And if you think of that analogy, you get a sense of uh, it's sort of like if I used a radio analogy being at, uh, well, KTGO in Tioga, North Dakota, where I physically am today, and uh, the next day being at WABC in New York. I mean, and, and is it, should us as conservatives watching this field, seeing some of these things, I think, oh, boy, given, given you know, the, the media, the Democrats, the establishment, a lot of reasons to attack them as, you know, Maybe a, a reason to keep our powder dry a little bit, given how quick this has happened. I, I think so, but I, but at the same time, we should hold our public officials uh, to a, to a high standard. And I think that that Mr. Kane, as he goes through this process, is going to continue to grow like every single candidate that's running for president is doing. This is a process. This is a process that's going to go over the next several days and weeks and months, and it will all come to a conclusion. Kane, at this point, with his nine 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 economic plan, has completely led the economic debate, not just within the Republican Party, but across politics and across government. What he is essentially saying is, enough with the business as usual. It's not working. We have to have a new way of looking at how we're taxing, how we're spending, and how we are controlling the growth of government. And that is completely changing the dynamics. It's changing the entire campaign upside down, and it's making a lot of people in the establishment, in the Washington establishment, extraordinarily nervous. What are they going to do when they hear that? Well, they are going to bring about an unprecedented amount of attacks, and you'll continue to see those. And he will be uh, looked at with a microscope, as he should be. But at the same time, he is continuing to grow and to prosper as a candidate and will continue to see his very good ideas moving forward. All right, so let me take your challenge on holding him to a higher standard and also uh, scrutinize his, his policies a little bit on abortion. Uh, you know, he has said about us as clearly as you can, pro-life, no exceptions. Yet sits down in an interview with uh, the doofus from CNN, uh, who I can't even half understand sometimes, and maybe maybe Herman couldn't as well, on, uh, on abortion, and all of a sudden is all over the map. How does that happen? Well, here's, here's where Mr. Cain is. He is a social conservative. He's a deeply spiritual and religious man. He's an associate Baptist minister at his church in Georgia. He is pro-life. He's always been pro-life. He's pro-marriage. He's pro-family. End of story. That's where he is. And 
the, when one goes through a campaign, and, and, and you've been on the campaign trail as well with different candidates interviewing them, they're up from 6 in the morning, they, their head doesn't hit the pillow, the pillow many times until midnight or long after. Uh, they're studying, they're, uh, they're doing briefings, they're talking to the media, they're, they're going to, to finance type events where they're raising money from the grassroots. It becomes a long day, and like any of us, we don't always have our best complete day. But Mr. McCain, uh, Mr. Kane has always been a social conservative and always been pro-life. And totally, I, I get that. I said that. I, I, you know, I, I've met the man. I've introduced the man at events. I think the world of him. He's one of my favorite guests ever. Call him the Herminator. He always compliments the show for the name. Hey, common sense. You guys have got it. How does he get on a show in which he has such firm convictions on all these issues and sound as though he's being uh, Barack Obama or, for that matter, uh, what some might say on the right, Mitt Romney by kind of being on all sides of the issue? Well, he's not your regular politician. He's not practicing talking points into a mirror. He is listening to people. And I can tell you that in the end of the day, in the end of the day, when it's all said and done, he is 100% pro-life. I agree with you. I'm, I'll, I'll move on. I, I couldn't agree anymore. I'm only asking about the interview techniques, but I, I take your point. Let's and, go to some other, other quick... Is, is Scott, Scott, when you're running a, an insurgent campaign and you don't have the tens of millions of dollars like a lot of these other candidates do, and certainly like Obama does, you need the world of earned media, free media, which means you do interviews. You do, media, you do interviews for an entire uh, hour like you did on that one. And, yeah, some things are said, but at the end of the day, he's 100% pro-life. Okay, so uh, in other words, let's, let's, we'll set aside the issues for a moment because there's been a number of these things that have caused some criticism, left and right. I want to give you a chance to respond to, to both sides and the criticism. But those tactics, uh, whether it be Gitmo, uh, you know, uh, negotiating with terrorists, uh, you know, I could go down the list here, have prompted some to say, okay, he's not ready for prime time. First, from where you'd expect it, Jay Carney and, uh, you know, the, the White House press briefing, quite critical, uh, referencing uh, Congress's all-time approval rating. Carney said to last in the press corps, I know nine is a popular number in the Republican Party, but this can't possibly be the kind of nine they want. Nine, 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 nine. What do you say to Jay Carney? Well, all you got to do is, is say the numbers back to, to Jay and, and why this White House and this president is in such tremendous trouble. 14.9, which is the national debt as we speak right now. Trillion nine dollars. Yeah. Trillion dollars. Nine uh, percent is the unemployment rate. In fact, it's a little bit higher than that right now. The underemployment rate is nine times nine. It's 18 percent. So that is our problem right now, is our economy is stuck. We need to have a new way of thinking about how we put more money onto the kitchen tables of America, how we have less money in the coffers of Washington, D.C., for them to spend on programs and special interests that they see fit. And I think that why Jay Carney was mentioning that is because that is the discussion right now. The discussion is Herman Cain and his plan to fix Washington and create jobs. So it doesn't By the way, probably, me probably, probably also is, says – probably also – Probably also says they're a little worried about it when he's zinging, uh, you know, Herman Cain from the podium and Congress and trying to tell, you know, they're worried. Okay, let me, about Karl Rove, you know, saying he's winging it, he's got to be better at this, how does he blow it? What, what do you say to, to Republican criticism like that from our friend Karl Rove? Karl Rove is a brilliant, brilliant man, a, a brilliant strategist, and we both know this. We both, uh, you've had him on your show many, many times. I've worked with him personally. Uh, Karl says that he is the umpire for uh, Fox News, who is calling bars and balls and is calling strikes on the candidates. I would just, in this one particular matter, say that as an umpire, he might want to get his eyes checked. Herman Cain is a refreshing candidate who is shaking up Washington and making things happen. Is he going to be perfect? No. He's a human being. He's going to make mistakes, as every candidate who's running is doing right now. But at the end of the day, he is the one person who has a plan has put it forward, has withered the attacks from the left and the right, and is still standing. All right, another, another quick issue, and i got to go quick on these, but you've got a storied national security career. Uh, Herman Cain said he'd release all the Gitmo detainees in exchange for capturing uh, soldiers uh, to, to a terrorist group. Uh, you know, did he mean to say that? No. I, you know, Herm, Mr. Cain, he's a, he's a proven leader. He has a philosophy that is peace through strength and through clarity. It's an extension of Ronald Reagan's uh, doctrine that worked so well in the 80s. He is tired of President Obama's world tours of apology, bowing down to foreign leaders. 
He's proud of where we are and should be as the world's superpower, and he sees our economic decline is taking away our capability to protect our, our borders in the U.S. and to protect our national security nationally. All right, la- has- last, last question. I only have a minute left, so I've got to go quickly on this. Um, I hope your family's not listening out here in North Dakota, but you are a smoker. Uh, Mark Block, uh, you know, who's been uh, with Herman Cain at Herman's Cain's side through this whole thing, is a smoker. You got an ad with the smoke, and it's caused a, a, you know, a smoking gun of campaign commercials. What's the deal with the smoking ad? Well, he's, you know, as as Mr. Block said, Cain is a different candidate. He's a real candidate. His momentum is real. His supporters are real, and this tells their story, which is they're different. They are going to go out there and they're going to shake things up, and it's not going to be exactly as it was before. <laughs> All right, I'm waiting for the next ad with you smoking, even and, and, and your poor mother having to, to witness that. But I think that the whole smoking thing is the most ridiculous thing ever. Big deal. Uh, but anyway, great talking to you. Mark Fightway.